get an inside look at what the devil is doing. But you're going to get it from God's standpoint because he, he laughs. You know, he sits in heaven and he laughs because his enemies are coming to nothing. I said nothing. Is this on? Yes. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. They're coming to nothing. So God is doing something in the earth. But what he's doing is he wants to replicate himself in you. He wants you to do the works of Jesus. And then he wants you to do the greater works. Now, the greater works are when we all get together and we actually agree. Can you imagine that? Well, no, no, honestly, when did this all start? The church, the ecclesia, started on the day of Pentecost, I believe. No, no, Jesus breathed on the disciples. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, he was trying to show them, hey, listen, someday you're going to feel God's breath in the upper room. It's me. Okay? But that period of time from when Jesus breathed on them until the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, the disciples had to get over themselves. Just like you're going to do. You're going to get over yourself. And that little bit of brain activity you got, you're going to let it go. Okay, so God wants to pick a fight with the devil. And so what he's done is he's anointed and appointed you. And on the day of Pentecost, it says they were in one accord. Do you know that that is a miracle? And then there's a mighty rushing wind. When's the last time that's happened in a service? And then there was fire on people's heads. And then utterance. People were speaking in other languages that were not their own. And then Peter had to get up and say, these are not drunk, as you suppose. Now, listen to me. What has happened to us? I mean, is the Holy Spirit backed off? Is he backing off? <laughs> Absolutely not, especially the third row back there. So what are you waiting for? So God has this thing all planned out for you. He loves you so And let's just talk about holy fire. <laughs> the reason why holy fire is so important in this generation is because every single move of God has been absolutely hijacked and aborted because people got in the flesh. And uh, you could, you could, if you could have everybody stand up here and testify... I mean, all kinds of, of people that are in the cloud of witnesses right now would say, listen, we're, we're cheering you on and we are for you, but we have laid a foundation for you. And we are waiting for you to culminate the mystery of the ages, which is the revelation of the sons of God. And the, and the church is coming into that fruition where there's no spot or wrinkle anymore. But what it has to do with is you getting over yourself and then entering into the holy fire and being cleansed. Well, the lights didn't go off, Pastor Peter. I remember the last time I preached this message. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, for an hour and a half, we just preached in the, the dark. I was not going to stop. Because he protests holy fire everywhere I go. Are you strate strategically placed in this generation? Well, then, when does the redeemed of the Lord say so? How about today? God has already voted for you. I want to say this. Where it says there's life and death in our tongue, and we say, well, what are you saying? The Lord, when I was preparing for this, the Lord had reminded me something. Um, when you complain... 
Can I say it? When, when you actually complain, um, if you could see what you're releasing, it would scare you. And it would stop you. And I'm saying that because that was something the Lord showed me. I didn't get it, the power it, it, that's in my tongue. Someone comes to me and says, how are you doing? How are you doing, Larry? Well, now I'm not saying you do this, but just, you know, imagine we've all been there. Well, do, 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 Whoa, if you could see what you just released. God spoke the world into existence through words. So what are you speaking into existence today? In this very moment today, what are you speaking into existence? Because see, I got it. When I spoke at that thing and I said, she shall live and da 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 and then it was gone, just like that. It left. And I was so exhausted. Then I went and took a pregnancy test right away, and I was still pregnant, and I was like, hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and she's exactly what I prophesied, exactly what I said she is. She's six years old, and she's strong, let me tell you. God knew I could handle it, amen. <laughs> the power of when we believe in lies of the enemy See, here's the thing. I think most of our battleground is not actually like that. Like an example of some big cloaked like, demon coming at us. Most of the battleground, I believe, is actually in our mind. There's a reason why it says to take every thought captive. Because I think the enemy is constantly prowling to infiltrate your mind. And so you just believe. And it's so small. It's not even like big lies. It's like subtleties. He loves the subtleties because he just breathes on them. And then you agree with it. And then that thing grows and festers inside of you. What does it look like? Oh, she thinks this about me. Uh, let's just be real. You say, oh, she thinks this about me. How do you know that? That's a lie. That's a lie. That we, but see, it's just a subtlety. Subtlety. Oh, I have nothing to offer. I have nothing to offer at this event. That's a lie right? Subtleties. And it grows and it grows. I don't know why. I have all this faith for everybody else when I pray. Come on. I got all this faith that they will get miracle. But when it comes to my own thing, cold, these little things, cold, sickness, fatigue, sore back, sore muscle, whatever, name it. You know, I got faith for the big disease. But when I've got like my throat now, it was a big deal. It was really, really swollen. I don't have faith that, that it's, it's going to get healed when I pray. I'm thinking, where am I going to go? Who's going to pray, right? Like, it's like somebody else has to come lay hands on me. He said, you cast it out. Because so many times, right, I'm looking for some, I've got, I've got so much faith for my friends. That's what it's me. I'm like, I need prayer. Now, it's okay to get prayer, obviously, it's a good thing to go to healing rooms. I'm, I'm a healing room associate director. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. The lie. Catch the lie. Do you see it? That it infiltrated my mind. Is I don't have power to break this. I don't have it. I think this is actually one of the biggest keys to warfare is to be able to recognize, stop and recognize where the voice of God is active in your life and where the voice of the enemy is active. But see, so often we walk through life, and I'm saying this because I've done it, walk through life and we're getting infiltrated in our thoughts and we we just think oh that's just me it's just something I'm struggling with no actually it's not you because you have Christ in you 